The Edmonton Oilers are hoping to take that last step and win a Stanley Cup this year, but they're already dealing with some serious preseason injuries. Nick Zoraris of Locked On Oilers is here to talk about that and all things Oilers next on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Gil Martin here and welcome everybody to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed Visit FanDuel.com to get started. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show the host of Locked On Oilers, Nick Zoraris. And uh, Nick, lots going on in Edmonton right now. Let's start with the injury news, some key injuries already, and we haven't even gotten through the preseason yet. Yeah, Evander Kane dealt with a nagging lower body injury most of the playoffs and knocked him out of, I want to say, midway through the conference final and the entirety of the actual cup final weirdly waited the entire summer to rectify whether or not he was going to do surgery or try and rehab his way back into the game. But he's got, he had surgery last week. The early estimates are January to begin hockey activities. And you'd imagine a two or three week ramp up period to get him ready, but that's a long ways down the road. Darnell nurse is dealing with a nagging lower body injury. That's also from last year's playoffs, but didn't rise to the threshold or degree really to need surgery. So he's going to try and play with that. Leon Dreisaitl had off-season surgery to deal with a lower body injury as well. You know, you go on one of those long cup final runs, that's a lot of miles, then it starts to add up. And even if you can play, it doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy or 100%. So it's going to be really important for the Oilers to find a way to maintain that because they didn't lose a lot of games last year. And historically, we know if a team has good injury luck the following season, that typically isn't the case. So how do you deal with some of these injuries? How do you replace the production of Evander Kane? Let's start with that. So the logic is that they're going to recreate it in the aggregate. They bring in Skinner. They bring in Arvidsson. They push guys who are playing higher in the lineup, down the lineup, and it lengthens out the lineup. You know, Kane, 20-some-odd goals pretty consistently every year. Good net front guy, but he's not on power play one. He doesn't kill penalties. So recreating those minutes, and it looks like at least to start the year, the minutes that Kane was getting are going to go to Jeff Skinner, but it's a long season and minutes and priorities, who gels well with who changes. They're, the Oilers have options for the first time in quite a while where they can play Ryan Nugent Hopkins on first line on a, on a left wing. They can play him on the second line on the left wing or play him in the middle and move dry sidle outside. He can play on the third line on the wing or center with Adam Henrique as well. And when you have a player like Nuge who's able to kind of play a little of everything because he's so versatile skill set wise, it opens things up. And that'll be the key for the Oilers this year is even though and we're going to talk about the new guys in a minute, that's kind of the key to integrating all of these new pieces is finding out what the most optimal combinations are. Do you think the team would be better off to have, let's say, Darnell Nurse sit out a few games early in the season and get healthier or does it make more sense for him to try to play through it that's a great question in all honesty i've always of the opinion you get it cleaned up because the longer you let it linger it gets worse we see this all the time where you have a nagging injury that's not serious enough to keep you out but because of that injury you're moving a little bit differently your body starts to overcompensate for it and it makes you more susceptible to other injuries you know i was talking yesterday with somebody about christian mccaffrey who i and him both unfortunately have in fantasy of he had a calf injury and because of that it started to impact his achilles how he was walking and that's a much more serious injury and that's kind of the case here you know if it's a poll whatever but based on the fact that they went the entire off season they didn't do surgery it leads me to believe he's going to be okay to play but at a certain point, you do worry about that long term because he is on the team for at least another six seasons after this year. And you don't want that nagging lower body injury to become something more serious. And also, it's better to have him healthy come, you know, April, May, yes. hopefully June than it is in October. 
Yes, 100%. And that's really important. The Oilers got very lucky injuries-wise in the playoffs where the only player who ended up missing significant time was Evander Kane. Adam Henrique missed, I want to say, nine of the 25 playoff games, but he was still able to play a decent chunk of them, whereas Kane, it was really clear, especially in that Vancouver series, that he wasn't healthy and they dropped him in the lineup and then eventually pulled him from the lineup entirely because... When they were going well in that series against Vancouver, that second line with Dreisaitl wasn't really doing anything. They were getting killed defensively. As great as Leon is, he's not a defensive stalwart. Kane is not giving you anything defensively. So they need the Oilers need injury luck to be on their side. But I think that's true of every team. Yeah, no question about that. Let's talk about some of the new faces that this team has and how they're going to impact the lineup. So you've got Jeff Skinner and Victor Arvidsson coming in. Arvidsson's on a two-year deal. Skinner's on a one-year deal. Both very clear. They want to get some good – they want a chance to win a Stanley Cup while also being able to get some value in the marketplace. You know, Arvidsson's coming off of a serious back injury where he only played 15 games last year. And Skinner's coming off of being bought out. And the logic being, if you're Skinner – I ride shotgun with Dreisaitl or McDavid. I get 25 or 30 goals. I can get one last good contract in the NHL before I hang it up. Um, uh, Victor Arvidsson, I need to prove I can stay healthy for a full season, have production to get a long-term contract. And then on the back end, you know, they have a lot of questions. You lose a Cody CC, you lose a Philip Broberg, you have to trade some guys and your, your options on that right side they're scary outright. You know, I I've been talking about it pretty much the entire summer on locked on Oilers of the defense is going to be what defines the season. You take CC out for Ty Emerson in theory, good idea, but Ty Emerson has 30 career games of NHL experience. And you're asking him to ride shotgun with Darnell nurse, which are going to be the most difficult minutes against other teams, best forwards. And then that third pair, I still don't know who's going to end up playing with Brett Kulak. It could be Troy Stetcher. It could be Ty Emerson after all, and he moves down and Stetcher goes up. It could be Joshua Brown. It could be Travis Dermott, who they brought in on a PTO. They have a lot of candidates for that spot and nobody's really pulling away yet. It seems early on, it seems like it's going to be Josh Brown because he's played penalty kill before and they don't really want to put Stetcher or Dermot on the penalty kill, and that's kind of the direct Vincent D'Arnais replacement, whereas I still don't feel confident in that back end because none of these guys have big track records. You're talking about Stetcher and Brown. They've been fringe six or seven D guys on teams like Arizona and Detroit, which don't inspire a ton of confidence. If you can't crack those teams' top six, you're going to be in the top six for a team that is trying to win the Stanley Cup. The defense will be the defining unit for the Oilers this year. You mentioned the defense. Let's talk about reasons for concern and reasons for optimism. I'm assuming that the blue line is the top reason for concern. Absolutely. You know, we just talked about Nurse being injured. You know, if Nurse gets knocked out, then you're talking about Dermot, Stetcher, Emerson, and none of those guys should be playing on a second pair without somebody who has experience. And as good as Ekholm and Bouchard are together, there's a real argument you might be better off splitting them up at least early in the season to kind of distribute that risk a little more evenly throughout the lineup. Because if you have the best first pair in hockey, that's great. But you go to that second and third pair and you're losing those minutes consistently, it starts to accumulate over the course of the season. As far as optimism, I mean, this is the deepest forward group McDavid and Dreisaitl have ever had. You can go player by player. And last year was the first time in their respective careers they were in each other's most common line mate. Now you have even more forward depth than you had last year. You have a real good number three center in Adam Henry who can kill penalties as well. You have Nuge who can still play anywhere. You drop into possession analytic darlings like Skinner and Arvidsson to ride shotgun with Dreisaitl who should make his work a little bit easier. And then the last thing, and I talked about this on the Thursday episode of Locked on Oilers, was... Stuart Skinner finally seems to have some confidence in his own game, especially based on the way the playoffs went. I know he did end up getting benched for one game in that Vancouver series, but after that, he when he came back in that series, he outplayed Shelovs, he outplayed Jake Ottinger in the conference finals, and he was not the reason they lost to the Panthers. I, I vehemently disagree with anybody who puts it on Skinner alone because ultimately it was defensive issues. And that's the that's the reason this is so concerning, that they were undone by their defense. And now on paper, their defense is worse than it was last year. And now we're going to try and do it again. Well, you got until the trade deadline to figure out, you know, exactly who's going to be there to come the playoff run. Nick, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? 
So the Locked On Oilers, all the major podcasting platforms and on YouTube. And then my Twitter handle is just my name at Nick Zararis. Same thing with Instagram, Nick Zararis, Nick, Z-A-R-A-R-I-S. Thanks for having me, Gil. Hey, thanks for being here, Nick. Always a pleasure. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. My favorite feature on the Game Time app remains the view from your seat. When you sign into the app, you could see a panoramic view from your seat before you buy the tickets so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. 